What's that I hear, baby Groot? There's a special guest joining us today. Hey YouTube, Sarah here with Crimson Wool and I have another cute tutorial ready for you guys as well as a fun little surprise guest that will be joining us at the end of this video. So please make sure to watch the whole video and see the special guest that will be joining our video today. But if you would like to make this cute little baby Groot with some Valentine's Day love or just a heart, um, then yes, this is the video for you. As always, I don't own rights to these characters. I'm not taking credit or anything like that. This is just a free pattern showing you how I created this cute little baby Groot. Also, pattern credit to the heart. Um, I didn't create the pattern for this heart. Please go ahead and follow Yarn Bloom Boutique. She has some great cute Emma Grooming tutorials as well as an awesome book that I actually just ordered myself and I can't wait for it to arrive. So I will have a link in the description box below to her um, book that you can find on Amazon and then go ahead and follow her on um, Instagram as well. So the heart pattern is actually created from a pattern that she posted for a cute little Valentine's Day envelope. So I just want to give credit where credit's due. But with that, um, please continue watching all the supplies needed as abbreviations and the basic written pattern is in the description box below. So yes, with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to start with the legs. You are going to make two of them and it's going to be the same exact pattern. So go ahead and start with the first leg. You're going to work six single crochets into a magic circle. Pull to close up your gap. Now you've worked round one. Round two will be two single crochets into each stitch all the way around and that should give you a total of 12 single crochets for round two. Don't forget to place your stitch marker. <laughs> Round three will be one single crochet into each stitch back loop only. So you're going to be working your single crochet only into this back loop, not through both. So that will give you a total of 12 single crochets for round three. And you're just working one into the back loop only all the way around. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and tie off. Make sure that we create at least two knots so that our gap doesn't come open. And then I just cut off a little. You don't even have to because you're gonna stuff it into the foot anyway, but I just wanna get it out of the way while I continue to work. So now you're gonna form <clears throat> your foot into a little cup. And so for round four, we're gonna be doing decreases and we're gonna be creating a little foot area and so we did back loop only so that it creates a little ridge right here and now we're going to decrease so round four will be one single crochet into the first two stitches and now we're going to do four single crochet decreases the decreases are worked into the front loop only of the next two stitches and you decrease so repeat that three more times. And you should have a total of two stitches remaining. Work one single crochet into each of those stitches and you should have a total of eight single crochets um, for round four. Rounds five through eight are one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that's a total of four rounds, just simply working one single crochet. 
as you work, don't forget to stuff. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and stuff my foot. And then as I continue to get a little bit more length into the leg, I'll go ahead and stuff the leg. So I went ahead and finished up to round eight. I'm at the last stitch. I worked my single crochet. And now we're going to close off. So we are going to do a slip stitch very loosely into the next stitch. Go ahead and cut off your yarn and pull that. And you wanna just make sure that you have a stitch to work into right here. So it looks a little funky right now. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to push this, um, I'll probably cut off a little bit more there. We're just going to push in our tail into the leg. And then we just make sure that we have a workable stitch right here um, for when we join the legs. So go ahead and do the same exact thing for the other leg, closing off the same way. Make sure that you stuff finish stuffing your legs, and then I'll meet you back here once you have both legs ready. So we're going to make two arms as well, and so the arms are the same pattern. You're gonna start with six single crochets into a magic circle. Close your gap. And then rounds two through seven are just one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Place your stitch marker, because these can be tricky. Round two, I make sure that um, when I'm done with round two, I make sure that I tie a knot twice and then go ahead and cut off a little bit there. So the arms are not stuffed. You don't need to worry about stuffing the arms at all. They're super simple. Just one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So you should have a total of seven rounds at the end and I will meet you back when you have finished your seven rounds and then we will close off. I will show you how to close off. Okay, so I finished all my seven rounds and now we wanna close um, so that we can attach the arm. So what I do is I work a single crochet into both sides. So I'm going to insert my hook and I'm gonna push it through both sides like this and work a single crochet. And then I just do that twice. So just one more time and however you want. Sometimes I, I like to go through the side more right here, like right here or you could simply go back through both ways. It doesn't, it doesn't matter um, whichever way you feel uh, comfortable doing it, then go ahead and do that. You just simply want two single crochets to close the arm. And then you cut off, leaving a tail long enough to sew onto the body. And there's your arm. So go ahead and make another one of those as so well. So we made both legs, let's go ahead and join them. You're going to take your legs and place them together, making sure that the feet are facing forward. You don't want them one to be like off to the side like that. You want them to face forward. And then you're going to take your hook and bring it through one leg. And then the same thing on the other side, both legs. So you have both legs attached onto your hook and you're gonna join the legs with a single crochet. This doesn't count as any stitch. It's just the single crochet to join them. And then pull that tail tight. And you can snip off a little bit of that and just stuff it into the leg. Now we are going to work 15 single crochets evenly all the way around. So however that works for you guys to work the 15 single crochets where it looks nice and neat, then go ahead and do that. So this is round nine, and that is 15 single crochets evenly all the way around. And then make sure you place your stitch marker
Okay, so what I did is at the end, I had to do a single crochet decrease to get my 15 stitches, just because up front, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna skip too much of a stitch to make gap right here in between the legs. So I um, added a stitch there and then took one away here. So I hope that doesn't confuse or complicate it at all. It's just simply 15 single crochets evenly all the way around. But I just wanted to let you know what I did. One, two rounds 10 through 13, you will work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that's a total of four rounds. And I will meet you back here at the end of round 13. Pushed up to round 13 and we're gonna stuff a little bit more. All right, moving on to round 14, we are going to decrease to create the neck. We're going to work one single crochet into the first stitch and then a single crochet decrease into the neck. And then at the end, you should have a total of 10 single crochets for round 14. Round 15 is an increase round. This is creating the head. So we decreased for the neck. Now we're gonna come back out and increase to create the head. So that will be two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. And you should have a total of 20 single crochets at the end of round 15. Round 16, work one single crochet into the first stitch and then a single crochet increase into the next. You'll repeat that all the way around, one single crochet, single crochet increase, and you should have a total of 30 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 17 through 21 will be one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. That's a total of five rounds and 30 single crochets for the stitch count of each round. So go ahead and work the remaining five rounds of single crochets and then I will meet you back to start round 22. Okay, so I finished up to round 21, and at this point, let's stuff just a little bit more. So you wanna stuff in this neck area. All right, moving on to round 22, we are going to start decreasing. So you're going to work one single crochet into the first three stitches. And then a decrease over the next. And that's the pattern repeat. Three single crochets, a single crochet decrease. And then at the end of the round, you should have a total of 24 stitches. Okay, we're going to place the safety eyes between rows 18 and 19. So when we started our neck, it was 15, 16, 17, 18. Between rows 18 and 19. So I put one in. On one side, 
making sure that it's kind of like even with the legs. That kind of helps me. And then we're going to count over one, two, three, four. And then place the eyes. So not into the fourth stitch. So you count over four and then place the other eye into the fifth stitch. So it's four stitches apart. And then go ahead and put on your backings. Continuing on to round 23, we are going to continue our decrease round, but for this round only, we will be working into the back loops. So you will work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next two stitches. And then you're going to work your single crochet decrease into the next two stitches back loop only. So normally we do that in the front loop. So let me show you how we would do this in the back loop. You're going to insert your hook into the back loop and pull up. So you have two loops on your hook. Repeat that process into the next stitch. Insert your hook, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook and pull through all three. So that is how you do that, working into the back loop only. So this is creating um, a, an extra loop right here. That front loop is gonna allow us to work into that when we do the the branches for his like crown area so repeating work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next two stitches and then your back loop only single crochet decrease and at the end of this round you should have a total of 24 single crochets before we continue on to round 24 let's stuff Working round 24, the pattern repeat will be one single crochet and then a single crochet decrease and we work those into the front loop only. And then repeat that all the way around and then you should have a total of 12 single crochets. Round 25 is our last round for the body. And then we are going to work single crochet decreases. So it will be a total of six single crochet decreases all the way around. And at the end, you should have six stitches remaining. And then we will cut off our yarn, leaving a long enough tail to close in the gap as well as add some facial features. So we're going to address the eyes and add a nose. So I would say a good 12 to 18 inches. And if you need to add any extra stuffing, go ahead and do it at this point before you close in your gap. Grab your yarn needle and then let's close that gap in. And so we do this simply by just repeating the same process of what we do for a decrease. So instead of with our hook, we take our needle and wrap it around the front loop only of the next two stitches and then pull your yarn and then repeat that two more times. Front loop only, wrapping of the next two stitches and then one more time. And then at this point we could go ahead and pull and that closes the gap. I just love that. <laughs> it gives me all the feels whenever I do that. So at this point, we are going to take our yarn needle and we're going to bring it over to the side of the eye right here and then bring that through. And now we are going to basically bring the eyes into the head just a little bit more. So to do that, bring your needle over straight across onto this side 
and push it through to the back. And you're gonna pull that. And then when you do this, you are going to pull tight. Don't pull too tight where you're gonna break your yarn, but just tight enough to where your eye is getting pushed into the head. So it might look a little weird at first, that's okay, don't worry. We can fix it by moving it around if we need to. But we've done one eye. And so now we're gonna repeat that process on this side. So to do that, insert your needle back into the same hole that you brought it out through and then bring it to this side right here. Because you just want to make sure that you're not pushing anything in on this side right here. Okay, so now, repeating the same process, we brought it through on this side, then we're gonna put it back through directly across on the other side of the eye right here, and then pull. And then I always like to just bring that up and pull tight. Okay. So now our eyes have been pushed in just a little bit, and then we are going to do the nose. So go ahead and insert your hook again into the same place and bring it through right here. So we have the middle right here of the eyes and we're going one row down. And then we are just going to wrap it around one stitch. So like this. And I wrap it at least three times. And then I bring that back down into the head right here. And don't pull too tight. And all that stuffing tends to come out. So I always gotta get that out of the way. And so now we've done the nose. And that is it for the face. Um, you could just go ahead and work your tail end back and forth throughout the head. Just making sure that you don't pull any areas tight to where they are like caving in. So before we attach the arms, which would normally be the next process of a pattern, um, we want to work the like the vine. So for that, I am going to be using my 3.75 hook and I am going to chain 50 tightly. Okay, so we have our chain 50. Um, make sure you leave a long enough tail here to sew on to the body. And likewise on the other end, just pull that tight right there and so now we have our little vine branch so now what I do is I'm going to take one end and I'm going to attach it to the back of this foot right here and then work that tail back and forth to secure this and then you could at that point once you've worked it a few more times into the leg you can cut it off so we have this attached here and we are going to start to wrap so we're going to wrap it around the leg and I'm doing this pretty tightly but not so tight that it's going to like pull this out you know so wrap it at once, and then I'm wrapping it around the torso and bringing it around the neck. Yarn needle to this end, and then pull this tighter and attach right there by sewing into the neck. So we have it attached there. And now what we want to do is go through the body and insert our needle through the body and through one of the stitches of these vines. And then back down into that next stitch and then making sure that you come out through one of these. So the point of this, um, 
I hope I'm, I'm explaining this okay, is that we are attaching this to the body by just stitching in random places to secure that it won't move. So I'm gonna bring it down over to this side and then bring it back through over here. So just making sure that you're bringing your yarn needle and just attaching it this way. So wrapping around onto the leg over here. And then coming back down over here. So you just wanna be able to attach this so that it doesn't move around. All right, so I think that's pretty good. So we have that attached and then just weave in the rest of your end in and out through the leg. And then you can go ahead and cut off the remainder. I think that is good. So let's go ahead and work on adding the little um, crown part here that has those branches that are like uneven. And so this part is kind of free handed and don't let that scare you because that scared me in the beginning when I was working um, on projects and someone would say that and I'd be like, no, you have to show me every single step. And I totally get that. But um, then you could just put, mess around with it too. So you're just going to basically be like creating height and bringing it back down. So you could follow each step I do or you could freehand it. So I'm not gonna have the written pattern for this in the description box, but because it's just kind of freehanded. So go ahead and attach your yarn. You're going to insert your hook through the loops that were created when we worked into those back loop only. And then go ahead and attach your yarn. Make sure you leave, you know, at least a good enough tail so that you could sew that in to secure that. Create a single crochet. And now I'm going to just work a double crochet into that next stitch. And then I'm going to work a half double crochet into the following and a single crochet into the next. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain two and work a double crochet into that same stitch. Then work a half double crochet into the following and a slip stitch into the next stitch. So let me pause there. So what you see is I'm just doing different heights to create those branches that look broken on the top of his head. And so now continuing to work, I'm going to work a single crochet into the next stitch and a double crochet into the following and another double crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next. And then I'm gonna work a slip stitch into the next stitch and then I'm going to chain two and work a double crochet into the same stitch. So this is allowing me to get that height that I want because I want it to be a little higher here then I want to come back down and work a half double crochet and then a slip stitch into the following. So see, we're just creating different heights. So that's why I'm saying this is pretty random. I do Every time I do this part, I don't even do it the same. I'm just creating height and then I'm bringing it back down and I'm slip stitching to kind of close that off. All right, go ahead and work a half double crochet into the next stitch and then a double crochet into the following and then work another double crochet and then at this point I'm going to chain two and then work a slip stitch into the same stitch that I did my double crochet and then a single crochet into the next and a double crochet into the next stitch and a half double crochet into the following and then a slip stitch.
And then one more, we're going to work a half double crochet, then a double crochet, a double crochet again into the next stitch. And then this part might be a little weird because this is where we joined or where we continued our round. And at this point, I'm just going to work a slip stitch into the same stitch that we did our join. And then cut off the yarn. And pull. Now we have his little crown right there. And we can just weave in our tail ends. So adding the little leaves. I have some green yarn here and I'm going to do about two, two feet, maybe even a yard would be fine, two to three feet. Um, and we, I will show you how I do this. So you could do this a few ways. Um, you could do it the way I'm going to show you, or if this doesn't, the way I do it doesn't work out for you, then you could crochet little leaves and just attach them. Also, you could cut out little pieces of felt and hot glue them on. You could do that as well. Um, play around with it. But this is what I do because I don't like to sew in like six or so of different leaves or hot glue. So, which I do hot glue a lot on my projects. But for this one, I've come up with this process. So what I'm going to do is I have my long piece of yarn here and I'm going to bring this through leaving just a long enough tail so that we could sew that end in. And what I do at this point is I grab my 3.75 hook and I'm going to attach it through this vine that we created. And I'm going to work what is like a peacock stitch. So I'm going to chain three and then I'm going to work a slip stitch into that, this area right here. So there's that stitch right there that we started our first chain and then also into that second loop where we did our connection and then work my slip stitch. So now we have this little leaf that's created and at this point you pull that through that long end. I hope this doesn't seem like more work to you. It might, it might seem like more work to you but I just like to work with the same piece of yarn. And then I'm going to insert my hook back, or my um, needle that I attached my yarn to back in, and then just come up through over to just somewhere in the torso area to attach another leaf over here. And then just pull your yarn tight and you'll see that that will create your little leaf right here. And so that's what I do. Again, if that is too frustrating for you or something that you think is too much work for you, then please go ahead and create a process that you like and works for you. I'm going to move on up towards the head. Okay, you know what? I just thought of something, so let me mess around. If this makes it on the clip, then you know that it worked. If it doesn't, then you won't even see it. <laughs> but I was thinking, I wonder how this would work. So like when you look at like cross stitching and stuff, um, if you have, um, then what I've seen before is where you take your yarn and wrap it around your needle a few times and then you insert it back into your work. Let's see what this looks like. So you could do something like that too, if that's a little bit easier. 
So we'll go ahead and leave that one because that was a little fun. So if that's something that's easier, let me try that again and see what it looks like. So let's come up right about here. This one might be a little different, but I'm gonna wrap one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna wrap six times and then I'm gonna come back into my work and pull. Oh yeah, that looks cute. It kind of looks like a little spiral. So you could do that as well. I didn't think about that one last time. If that's a bit easier, which actually kind of is a bit easier. So I'm gonna make some more down here. But I also like the way these ones look too. All right, that one looks, that one has a little bit of yarn, but it's okay, it looks good too. As long as you feel happy with it, then your pro whatever process you use that works good for you, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna sew in the tail ends now, and then we will attach the arms, and we are almost finished. I'm so excited, we're getting close to creating that heart. So let's go ahead and attach the arms. I will do one of them, and you just work them the same way. So go ahead, since you have this piece right here that is by the neck, just attach the arm and don't worry about it. It won't be in the way. You can just work over it if you need to. So I attach to one side and then I'm bringing my needle back through and attaching the other side and then just working that back into the arm. And then I'm going to bring my needle and come up back into the back side of this part of the arm and repeat that same process. Just bring the remaining tail back in and just bring that on tight. And then one more will be in the middle. So go ahead and bring your yarn needle to the middle part of the arm and sew that back into the body itself. And then at this point you can weave in that tail and attach the other arm. So I might be going through this part a little more quickly. That's just because I have done a lot of tutorials now where I've attached the arms. So if I'm not going slow enough for you, um, you can always slow down the video. Or if this project is too intimidating for you, you can go ahead and work up that basic crochet doll tutorial for the mini one. Um, First, you could go there. That goes a little bit slower. And I will leave a link to that in the description box below. Okay, so I've attached my other arm and I have a long enough tail here to, to connect the arms. So that's what I'm gonna do here. If you don't, then go ahead, just weave in your end and then you could attach another piece of yarn here to do this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna weave in this tail end into the arm and bring it down to the base of it right here, right there. And we wanna join these little hands together. So I'm just going to insert my hook or my yarn. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna insert the needle into the other hand here. And just bring those together like this. So in your ends right here, So yes, so getting started, you are going, she starts with a chain three, but I'm gonna do a magic circle. So go ahead and work your magic circle and then chain up three, one, two, and three. Work two double crochets, one, two. Then work two half double crochets 
and all of this is going to be worked into the same magic circle. Two half double crochets and then one double crochet. Now we're going to repeat what we've done so far and come back up. We are going to work two half double crochets and two double crochets. And then do a chain two and work a slip stitch into your magic circle. So now this is what we have here and it doesn't quite look like a heart yet, but when we pull, we are going to have a heart. So go ahead and pull tight and then you have your cute little heart. I just love that, it's super simple. So go ahead and pull your tail and then go ahead and tighten that up. And then what I like to do is do a really tight knot right here. So I bring it down and then hold it in place and tie my knot. And there is our heart. And so at this point, I just cut off enough to where there's a little bit right here. And what I will do is I'm gonna take a little dollop of hot glue and press it down with the metal of my scissors. That way that doesn't come loose, especially if you're looking to give this as a gift or whatnot, um, then it's secure. So let's go ahead and add our blush. So I'll just grab some of that and I just apply to the side right here. And so you can use paint if you want. I just like to use the blush. I know it might rub off, but I don't trust myself with paint after I've worked on a project. So there is the blush right there. And then let's go ahead and apply the heart. So what I have here is my glue gun. Sorry, it's probably grimy. This thing is very well loved. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit here and work that over my, where I cut my tail end off. And then my little trick here is to just push down with my scissors because the metal is cool. So it tends to cool pretty fast. And then it also doesn't burn your fingers. So that's what I do there. And then I'm going to take a little bit right here and this is going to glue on to the hands. So you take that and you're going to press it down in the middle right there and hold that in place. And I thought it would be fun to have another little baby friend Valentine's Day love. So I went ahead and worked up um, this little cutie right here. So we have our baby Yoda who is showing some Valentine's Day love. And if you want to make him, it is the same exact pattern here. Um, and then you just use the ears from the other tutorials that I have as well as for the collar, you use the same pattern. So for the keychain tutorial that I have for Baby Yoda, you are just going to um, work up the ears and the collar, but the rest of the pattern is worked up the same exact way except for the crown part. So if you wanna make another little cute Baby Yoda with some Valentine's Day love and have two best friends, um, then you can do that as well. So that is my little surprise for this video today. Alrighty guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed the surprise. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you make one of these, please tag me on Instagram. You can find um, the link to my Instagram as well in the description box below. But yes, for that, this is the end of this tutorial. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. That way you can be notified anytime I come out with a new video. And with that, I look forward to crocheting with you guys again next time. Thank you.